Hello, good morning. This is my wand with a little bit of um, camo duct tape straight from Walmart because this is my aesthetic. This is my aesthetic. Okay, what's up, guys? Hi. Um, hello, hello, hello. Hey, how, how you doing? I just woke up. It is now officially 1.52, my husband's working days, and I keep waking up at midnight. And I hate it. I keep waking up at midnight. Last night, I had a fucking nightmare. And it was just horrific. Um, I don't know if I recorded and told you guys about my, like, other side quest experience at Home Goods yesterday. But I'm going to do that real quick. Um, just to get that out of the way. And I'll probably edit it into this video or something. I don't know. So, anyways, I'm in my jam jams. I'm in my my lady nightgown thingy because um how do you say i so i have this like fear of um dying in my sleep and if somebody finds me i want to look super cute so i have all of these like really pretty things that i sleep in um i don't know i've had the fear since i was a kid i used to fall asleep in like my cinderella dress when i was like three years old because it was like such a huge fear and so i've always had this issue and now i take medicine for ocd Hi guys, OCD squad, check in. OCD squad, check in in the comments. So, hello. Um, so I was at Home Goods and I was about to check out. You know they like do that weird snake thing, like the the line thing. And I swear to God, you know what? I may have run into this bitch before because. Like, now that I'm playing back her voice in my brain, I'm going through all the files of strange interactions I've had in this city. And I think I've run into this lady before. Yeah, anyways. So she was, like, really weird. I was on the phone with my husband, and I was taking pictures because I was on FaceTime with him. And I was like, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, I know this looks like shit. Shh. Shh. Hush. Hush, love, hush. Hush. Okay. So I was on the phone with him, and so he overheard this, thank goodness, but he was in my ear. I had these headphones in my ear. So he could hear, because she was right there and I was right here, he could hear what she was saying. And she was like, I hate shopping. I have to shop all the time. My daughter wants me to go to place shopping. And I was like, I was so happy. I was on like cloud nine because of all the Halloween shit. I was like, <laughs> so happy and exhilarated right for existence after being so depressed earlier that day and I was just like bling bling you know what I mean? <laughs> this is weird what this is completely uncalled for I wasn't talking to you and so she was like are you in line I don't know if you were looking at stuff but I, I'm just trying to ask if are you in line and the reason why I say I think I ran into her before because at Goodwill, somebody had a very similar interaction with me where they had, like, like brought up the line and tried to cut in front of me. And so I think that I've met this woman before. I think I have dabbled in this sorcery before. So anyways, I was like, yes, I'm in line. Obviously, I'm the next motherfucking bitch to go to the cashier. And she was like, are you in line? I don't know if you're just over here looking at stuff or whatever. Who the fuck would go and look at stuff and get to the point where you're the next person on line? Anyways, whatever. I digress. So she goes off about how she hates. She's like, I hate shopping. My daughter brings me shopping. I hate it so much. I'm not a girly girl. I'm not a girly girl at all. And she's kind of like going off. She's going off at this point. And I'm just sitting there like. Look, I looked at the cash register lady and I gave her the international women's sign of distress. You know what I mean? <laughs> Gave her the SOS, the SOS sign, and she didn't understand it. So I was like, this is fine. This is fine. It's cool. Whatever, right? So so she's going off. She says, I hate shopping. I hate shopping all the time. I hate shopping of all kinds. I was like, honey, write a book. Write a book. You're rhyming now. You write a book. So she's just like, and she's giving me that wolf stare. While she's telling me that she's like, I hate shopping. I hate shopping of all kinds. My daughter likes shopping. She shops so much. She takes me aboard. She tries to dye my hair. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. And I'm all still looking at the cash register. Who's dilly dallying? She's like, do, 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 do. And her own little thing. She walked away from the register. And I was like, 
oh no i have been abandoned which is one of my worst fears abandonment is like top tier worst fears right so i'm like stuck here with this lady losing her fucking mind and i was like you know what here we go baby buckle in buckle in so she starts going off about her daughter my daughter shops all the time i hate going everywhere i hate going places and she's just like losing her fucking mind and i'm like there's no way this is happening there's no way this is happening so she starts telling me about how her daughter who i assume is like five years old the way she's talking about her uh, she's like my daughter is always bringing me places she's always telling me to buy stuff for her and i said listen you're expensive you're really expensive you're gonna have to find it let's be honest let's be honest with each other you're gonna have to find yourself an old man just to keep up with how much money you want to spend all the time and you're gonna need to be honest with me about that relationship and i was like oh my god what? <laughs> like okay i was like are you telling your daughter that she's she sounds i'm assuming making an ass out of myself with the assumptions i'm assuming her daughter's like five right no 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 no. she's like 20 something she told me she's like i gotta because right afterwards i was like yeah i understand i was trying to relate i was like i understand i used to have panic attacks but i take medicine now so things have gotten better and she was like um that wasn't enough she had a one up me. She's like, no, I hate going places. I hate shopping of all kind. I hate H-E-B. I hate shopping for groceries. I hate coming into this place. I hate buying things. I'm not a girly girl. I'm not a girly girl at all. And I was just like, okay, okay, okay. You know, okay. I was like, I get it. Listen, I have kids too, just trying to relate and diffuse this whole situation. And it wasn't working. And it wouldn't work. And and so I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I was like, great. This is fantastic. I love this. So my husband's listening. And he's like, what the fuck? And he, she can't hear him. So he's just like side commenting on everything she's saying. And I'm like, mm-hmm, okay. And then she goes, how old are your kids? I was like seven and 13. And she was like, mine are 21, 20 and, and uh or she said 21, 18, and 15. And then she was like, I wish I didn't have a daughter. I can't believe I had a daughter. She's 18 or 20 by now. She's like one of the oldest. And she was like, boys, I understand. Pissing off the porch, I get it. Breaking your collarbone, I can handle that. And I was just like, what? You let your sons piss off the porch? But I'm holding it in. I'm just, I'm not trying to give her anything. I've done the... um. What I do with my dog, whenever I'm done talking to my dog, I look away. Body language. I'm already in my my body language era of the conversation where I'm trying to make a full exit. And I'm still, and I'm still looking at the cashier. And she is twiddling her thumbs, putting bags up, doing something. She's not at her station. She's like, walk down the way. She has abandoned me with crazy woman number nine and so I was like okay and so then she says she starts going off about how she never wanted a daughter now mind you her daughter's like 20 or 18 she's one of the older ones so I'm just like listening to this woman unpack about how she hates her daughter which is disgusting don't have kids don't be a fucking cunt don't have kids don't do that shit so then so then she's like um Going off about her daughter, then she switches up to sons because I was like, well, I have boys. I was a dumbass and I responded. I said, oh, well, I have kids. I understand. <laughs> no, no, I shouldn't have tried to relate. So then she was like, yeah, I don't think my 15 year old's going to make it to 19. And I was like, I was like, oh, my God, go ahead and react to that. Because I was like, what the fuck? When you thought that this bitch wasn't going to get wilder, she did. She did. She was like, she was like. Yeah, I don't think he's going to make it to 19. And it was like, all while she's giving me this, like, wolf stare, right? Like, she's just looking at me, like, not blinking. And I'm like, dude, maybe I just fucking, I must have pissed God off today. This must be what I deserve. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> I was like, okay, here we go. Buckle up, guys. We're going on a ride today. Um, please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. <laughs> this is like. Oh, fuck. No, fuck, fuck, fuck. And the cashier lady finally looked at me and she realized what was going on and she was just like, you know, it was like, <laughs> woman, help, help. <laughs> and so I 
walk o- I walk away. I'm like, okay, well, bye. Like, all nice. Just trying to be as nice and deflective as possible to this woman coming unglued in front of God and everybody. Telling us how much she hates her children and how much of a burden they are on her. And how manly she is. Because she's not a girly girl. She's not a girly girl. And I was like, bitch, I'm not a girly girl. I am, but I ain't. I is, but I I exactly ain't. (laughs) So I was just like, what? Anyways, so I was like, damn, I forgot about these interactions. Because I don't live in a big city anymore. When I've done in a big city, it used to be like this all the time. So I was like, whatever. You know, we go to HEB, we go to Walmart. I might have to defend myself with excessive force because people always there was a mental health crisis in the city and like drugs were crazy and i worked on the strip where not on the strip okay but i worked on the strand at a shop at a bookstore let me back this up so you don't think i'm a hooker (laughs) i worked at a bookstore on a strand that had that was really known for drugs and unfortunately there was an aa like five stores down so what would happen is they'd go to aa they'd get their little you know marks of whatever and then they'd go find some dude behind a dumpster and like hit that shit hit that flaca and then they'd get into a fight with each other while doing velociraptor screaming i should you not at the dumpster of the gas station and I've seen it so many times where it, is, it looks like a normal school teacher. And then she's like, she's got wrapped her hands and she's going <laughs> like at the trash can and digging stuff out, trying to bite people. But she looks absolutely NPC normal. And I'm just like, wow, Flocka is crazy here. Like, that's insane. That's insane. But that was in the city. And I just accepted it as a as one of those occupational, you know, environmental hazards that I was like, I might have to defend myself from a crackhead who is going to be way stronger than I am, and I might die. And I was just like, okay, whatever. But when I moved to a small town, I had forgotten all of those violent interactions that I've had before, which, whatever, um, whatever, whatever. Like I said, I was, like, totally okay with it, unfortunately, unfortunately. And I had small children with me, so I was like, of course I'm the type of person that will eat somebody whole, unhinge my jaw, and defend my babies. That's just who I am. So you you have to look at yourself in the mirror, and you'll have to look down that deep well and understand the type of person you are. And every person's different. I'm not saying you have to do what I did. But every day I left the house, and I was like, I may have, I may lose my life just going to Walmart, you know? Um, I may lose my life just going to work. I may lose my life pumping gas. I may. It was just the city hazard. Living in a city with that hardcore of mental health crisis and drug crisis. It was just, a, like I said, like a hazard that was like tallied into your rent. You know, when you sign that lease, they're like, oh, yeah, also a crackhead me. A SWAT team, which has happened before. A SWAT team may descend upon your home and you may see the Texas Rangers full sprint. In all their glory with their cowboy hats on, chasing some dude through your fucking front yard. And I was just like, it happens. It happens. But now in this small town, I have become accustomed to the quiet life. So running into this this lady was crazy. So let me tell you the story about her son, who is 15, and who she claims he will not live to be 19. And I wish I was making this up. I really do, because... <laughs> I I would rather never have an interaction like this ever again. You know what I mean? Um, that's one of the main reasons I, I love the fact that we left the city. I was like, oh my god, none of these fucking bozos. No, honey, there's bozos here too. It's just a different flavor. It's just a different flavor, bitch. So anyway, she says, while I'm walking away, that her son is 15 and he went to jail last year. Because while I'm walking away... I'm like, okay, uh you know, she says, he's 15. He went to jail last year. I'm going to try to recreate what she did. He's 15. He went to jail last year. It wasn't even his fault. He was hanging out with some bad people and they told him to hold something and he did. And it wasn't even his. It wasn't even his. It wasn't even his. So he holds on to it. He gets everything slapped on him. So now he's in jail and he just, he won't stop. He won't stop. He's not going to live to be 19. And I was like, (laughs) That was my last interaction with her. And so then I was like, okay, bye-bye kind of thing. And I don't know, maybe I was like kind of disassociating a little bit because I was like, 
I forgot what it felt like to have to deal with these kind of people and to access that aspect of my personality that was like, because my kids weren't with me this time. So I, it kind of threw me off, but my husband was listening in on the convo. And so it kind of threw me off and I was like, um, you know, I'm by myself, but I did bring my, my, my peace. I brought my peace with me, my my peacekeeper, I brought that with me, and it's because I had a feeling. I had a weird feeling before I left the house, and I had a strange dream that day, and I was like, maybe I should bring it, and I was like, no, I'm not going to, and then my OCD kicked in and was like, now that I thought about it, I have to bring it, so I brought it that day, but in my head, I was like, what if she just loses it on me, and I have to, like, defend myself? I was like in this stupid fucking home goods. I was like, are you joking? Because it was at first I was like, no, it's not going to get to that. I will not allow myself to be put into a situation like that again. I won't allow it. Right. But unfortunately, she was slowly descending into madness by opening up to me unprovoked and unsolicited. Right. And so I was slowly realizing. Do I need to like move away I couldn't move away from her I was in line and I couldn't you know it was just so crazy so I was just like <laughs> anyways that was my interaction on the way out of home goods it sucked it was crazy I do not recommend it but the interaction inside of home goods was pretty good I mean there were a lot of people that like they were kind of in the like the ways in the ways like the halls the ways the hallways what do you call those in the um aisles there you go bitch in the aisles like kind of like taking up space and I was trying to hurry up and take pictures of everything in the store while also like hauling ass to the other store to get like dinner for everybody um so I was like quickly like snapping pictures of everything I was like excuse me it was being very polite because I hate a rude bitch like do not make me do not, do not, don't. I just hate a rude person. So I'm like, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. I just need to take a picture of this real quick. And that was like the top thing I said yesterday was, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Can I just take a picture? Can I, can I just squeeze in? Can I just, you know, and I was respectful of people's space. I was respectful of people's privacy, but I was just quickly like snapping photos. And then whenever I got in line to leave, I met my match. I met my match. And I was just like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. No, you cannot ruin my day by telling me that your son's going to die because he went to jail and that you hate your daughter because she's a girl and you suggest to her that she dates an old man because you don't want to take care of her and that you hate her because she has female reproductive parts and you would rather her piss off the porch and break your collarbone. That was so, that was so wrong. Don't have, don't do that to your babies. These are babies. And every time I see somebody that's on drugs defending a trash can. I think to myself, that's someone's child. That's someone's child. That's somebody who their parents failed them, who they went down their bad road and had they have no support to try to make themselves better. And it's not always the case. Sometimes you could have great parents and then people are just shitty. I mean, my older sister, who you guys know nothing about, but because she was adopted to a, a wealthy family. Both of her parents were doctors and she had a princess castle room and she lived in a giant mansion and she spent her entire life hating my mom for giving her up for adoption, even though she had every opportunity to be successful and wealthy. And, you know, I was over here fighting for my life, hiding in ditches from the cops as a child. So every time I see somebody you know, is that, that I guess that door swings both ways is what I'm trying to say is that it's not always the case. I don't think you could ever apply a giant cover all or umbrella thing to any person because every human so different. And we see that in the mental health industry whenever somebody tries to take antipsychotics. But the brain chemistry varies from person to person so extremely that one person will have self-harm thoughts and the other person will uh, just be exhilarated or one person will just not have any more access to their emotions and the other person will just have all of them all at once every day so I'm not ever going to advocate for slapping a big ass band-aid on everybody and calling it a day but what I will say is that that was an extremely disturbing um that was an extremely disturbing 
interaction. And I carried that into my dream state. And I woke up at 12.30 in the morning. And I was very, um, very disturbed. I had to dream that somebody, that that woman's son had come up to me and my son. And, like, was crying and screaming and, like, took us out. And it was sad. It was very sad. And I woke up screaming in my dream. And I was like, man, I must have carried that. I must have carried that disturbing interaction to my dream world. And, um, yeah, that was just super out of nowhere. Anyways, y'all stay safe. That was my interaction. That was a 20-minute long video that didn't need to be recorded. All for me to explain to you that there are people out there that are just kind of losing it and being really mean and that's not okay anyways treat each other kindly know thyself love thyself i'll see you later bye